Hey everyone, we are in for a little bit of a treat here at BritLab HQ. I am joined by the rather awesome host of our sister channel, oh, Earth Unplugged, <laughs> Miss Maddie Moat. Hello everybody. So today, BritLab and Earth Unplugged are joining forces to take a little bit of a sideways look at some of the ways we could tackle climate change. Mm. Now, if you are subscribed to Earth Unplugged... And if you're not, why not? Good point. You will have seen Maddie and myself doing a video all about how the increases in the Earth's temperature are affecting the natural world. But here at Brit Lab, we want to look at some of the weirder, seemingly stupid, yet ingenious <laughs> ways that scientists are looking into tackling climate change. So first up is a super simple, yet a little bit weird method, and this is vertical farming. Which is not actually having a vertical wall and crops kind of planted up the side. No, no, no. So they're still horizontal, but it's basically crops that are piled up. We're already using Indoor farming, LED lighting, we're using hydroponics, which is where your plants get nutrients from water rather than soil. So really, this is just the next level up. Oh, hey, <laughs> see what you've done there. If you were to have a vertical farm that was the size of one New York City block, 30 storeys high, it would provide enough nutrition for 10,000 people to have 2,000 calories a day. Wow. Our next one is carbon negative technologies. Carbon negative would essentially be a technology that could grab carbon dioxide out after we produce it, almost suck in that carbon dioxide yeah. before it can do any harm. One of the leading things is actually called bioenergy with carbon capture and sequestration. Wow. They have great, great titles, <laughs> these guys. Yeah, really good work on the PR. Essentially what it is, is you could burn as many trees as you like if you could capture that carbon dioxide produced and bury it before it can do any harm. It's a bit like sweeping crisps under the carpet rather than actually sucking them up with a vacuum. Is that what you would do? That's totally what I'd do. <laughs> Sneaky. Right, except I'm not convinced because by destroying trees, the very thing that's sucking CO2 up from the atmosphere in the first place, and replacing them with smaller saplings that won't be able to absorb as much CO2, means the whole process can't be carbon negative. And also this idea of burying pockets of CO2 under the ground, to me that doesn't sound safe, it's just going to come back up again eventually, surely? Yeah, okay, granted, I'll give you that one. Yeah. Um, essentially it's like a stopgap before you get more efficient renewable energy mm. sources, because I don't know about you, but <laughs> you ever charge your phone using a solar charger? Rubbish. Rubbish. Takes forever, hardly charges it. Yeah. Come on, science. Catch up. But let's start with plankton. Now, you might think that plankton are just one species, but in fact, they're a really diverse group of organisms. So on the face of it, phytoplankton, let's be honest, they're kind of the boring ones, they're yeah. the plant-based plankton. Sorry, phytoplankton. But we humans definitely owe them a bit more credit because mm -hmm. they live on the surface of the ocean where they photosynthesize CO2 into energy. But I'm not just talking a little bit of CO2. This is 100 million tonnes of inorganic carbon a day. The phytoplankton, they actually need iron as a trace element to kick things off, but this is pretty hard to come by in the upper reaches of the ocean because iron is insoluble. But if we humans came along, dumped a whole load of iron into the water, then the phytoplankton can absorb it, they can bloom, and they can start photosynthesizing this CO2. And recent marine trials have shown that just one kilogram of fine iron particles can produce 100,000 kilograms of plankton biomass. But before I go and you know, chuck loads of iron filings off Brighton Pier, any yeah. drawbacks? Okay, so steady on, because there haven't actually been any large-scale studies into the long-term impacts of iron fertilisation into these intricate ocean ecosystems. Like we mentioned in the Earth Unplugged video, global warming is already disrupting these ecosystems anyway, so maybe the potential benefits would outweigh the risks. Hmm. So just missing out on the top spot on our favourite science and techie ways to potentially tackle global warming yep. is cloud whitening. Which sounds like a toothpaste. It's not, <laughs> but it is about messing around with clouds in order to try to change the world's climate. And it's based on something called albedo modification. Albedo is the amount of sunlight that something reflects. So a black tarmac road has a lower albedo than white sand because tarmac reflects less light than white sand. Now some scientists reckon that if you can affect the albedo of the Earth's surface, if you can increase it, you can reflect more sunlight and reduce that warming effect of the sun's rays. Okay, makes sense. So where do clouds come in? 
So clouds are a natural way of reflecting the sunlight back up into the sky. So how do we increase their albedo? Well, you need to go back to kind of like school geography for this one. Remember it? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> clouds form when water vapour condensates, condenses around what we call little seeds. It could be uh, salt crystals from like seawater spray or it could be pollutants. And actually, pollutants can make the best, biggest white fluffy clouds because they're so, so small. Yeah. So they make big white fluffy clouds with a high albedo. <laughs> Scientists have got an idea where you put machines on the back of ships, suck up loads of salt water from the ocean, spit it out like a thousand feet into the sky, cool. and those salt crystals could serve as those seeds. All right then, so that makes sense. Make more clouds, reflect more sun, cool down the earth. Perfect. Although it is all theoretical at the moment. Ah. Class, wind patterns and stuff in the sky might scupper the whole thing. So our top spot is wind turbines in the sky. Sounds weird. Now, whether you think wind turbines are a big old eyesore or actually a beautiful addition to the countryside, let us know what you think. It's hard to deny their usefulness as a clean and renewable energy source. And last year alone, our 4,000 odd wind turbines in the UK produced a total of 7.5% of the electricity that we use. That is promising. Yeah, That's it's pretty lot. good. Well, a company called Alteros Energies have actually come up with a new way to get wind turbines on the scene, but without wrecking our views. So that what they propose is that we take our wind turbines, put them on top of big old helium filled tires and take them way up into the sky. And of course, the higher you go up, the stronger the winds become. So the more efficient the whole thing actually gets, mm. three times more efficient than their land-based counterparts. They send the energy back down the tether to the ground mm -hmm. and they cost, is it 90%? 90 90% yeah. less to actually make them. Which is Absolutely crazy, considering rude. you're putting wind turbines in the sky. In the sky. Helium, not just there to make your voice sound funny. So, what chance does the human race have of combating global warming? Hmm. Well, we do have our best scientific brains looking at it. There are all <laughs> sorts of ideas. Lots of them are rather bizarre, mm. but I think that's kind of cool because that catches the public's imagination. So, get to watch this space. Thank you very much for having me, Brit Lav. It's been lovely um, to have you here. <laughs> thank you so much. If you like this film, then make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to both Brit Lab and Earth Unplugged for more science and nature videos just like this in the future. See you soon. Bye. And welcome to Earth Unplugged. Today I'm joined by Brit Lab's Greg Foote. Hi, I'm Greg. Is that what I do? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about some of the ways global warming is affecting animals around the world and how this could have a knock-on effect on us. Yeah, so... Uh...